thanks a lot for giving me this opportunity to come here and give a talk. Uh, in fact, this is my very first talk in the capital of my motherland, so I truly appreciate this occasion. So uh, what I'm going to talk about today can be summarized uh, saying how to get new invariants from well-known ones and preferably in such a way that you get something new. So we'll start to explain what Havana homology is, uh, how it was defined to, in a sense, generalize the uh, Jones polynomial, uh, and then in order to tell you which homological operations I'm going to talk about, I will have to define uh, unified homology theory due to Chris Putira, my co-author in this work. And uh, then I will show you what these iterations are, uh, how they define invariance with interesting properties uh, to the point that I personally don't know any other kind of invariance that have such properties. And finally, the last two slides, I will show some experimental data. So hopefully, Stavros will pay attention. Uh, you will like it. OK, uh, let's continue. So Havana homology is a special case of categorification. So as I promised, categorification tries to take something well known and make it better. So how it works? Uh, well, uh, it, yeah, just upgrades the category you're in to positive integer number. Instead of considering them, you consider vector spaces or free abelian groups or free R models if you have certain ring R of the corresponding dimension. We all know that if dimension is finite, then over the same field, the same vector spaces, well, vector spaces of the same dimension are isomorphic, but still knowing not just dimension, but the vector space itself, gives you excellent information. OK, with numbers, you definitely can perform certain operations. And you want to perform corresponding ones on the objects you consider. Well, addition and multiplication is easy. Instead of that, you consider just direct sum or tensor product of the corresponding ring. Difference is tricky, right? So what we do for difference, uh, we consider a chain complex instead. Uh, with some homomorphism between two vector spaces or free abelian groups, whatever the category. Oops. Look. Uh, Just a second. Hope it is. Mm. It decided to go asleep. Okay, perhaps I'll just. Sorry. Right okay. Where we here. Yes. Uh, so for difference, we assign a chain complex, and then indeed, when you consider only characteristic, it is this dimension minus that dimension. Now, it means that instead of assigning just vector spaces, you need uh, now complexes. So you need to redo the whole construction taking into account that this is what you have now, and it is not a big deal to do. Uh, now, if two integers are replaced with the corresponding complexes, and you, well, addition and multiplication works just as well. For difference, you consider, you need to consider a certain chain map, hopefully with good properties, and then difference will correspond to the code. Now, uh, we will work not only with integers, but with polynomials. And in this case, you consider not Dimension of only characteristic, but the graded portion. What it means is that uh, if your vector space is a direct product of factors, uh, then quantum or graded dimension Q is a quantum variable here, is just this sum where you multiply by the corresponding power. And uh, J can be both negative and positive, so we consider Laurent's polynomial just as well. Now, uh, let's look at one famous polynomial that we can categorify. Uh, so L will be a link. Uh, we don't need a diagram here, I guess. So Jones polynomial is a Laurent polynomial in a variable Q associated to this. And it is defined uniquely by two properties. Scanning relation that relates diagrams 
of two, well, actually of three links that are everywhere the same except a certain place where you replace positive crossing with negative or with a smooth one. And then, yeah, this is a relation. And then you need to know normalization, what it is on a trivial knob. Actually, we will use two normalizations today. We will consider two versions of the homology, a usual and reduced one. So we need a reduced version of John's polynomial nozzle. The difference will be only in the normalization. Instead of having Q plus Q inverse here, it is one. And actually, this matches better the well, standard normalization. So my notation will be like this. So if there is a, what is it called, propyl or magenta tilde on top of an invariant, it means that uh, reduced version is option, optional. So equation or formula works just as well for reduced and non-reduced one. If it is black, it means that it really has to be there. Now, uh, this is a nice formula. Unfortunately, it's not very convenient. Uh, it's not very convenient to use for computations. Also, it's not clear how to, how to categorify it because uh, for categorification, you want something that looks like a graded dimension or something. This is not what we have here. So let's look at another way to compute it. And this is basically uh, the way through Kaufman bracket that Tank was talking about earlier today. So uh, let's look at the example. We start with a diagram of a knot, and this is the only knot that people usually draw, graphoil. Uh, so it has three crossings, we can resolve all of them. For example, like this. So each crossing we resolved that way. Or perhaps perpendicular, or perhaps some other way. Uh, now we need to encode how we do it. We will do it by means of two more kind of markers, positive, red, negative. A blue, and it's easy to see how we do it. So if it crosses like this, this is red. If it crosses like this, it is blue. Uh, there are three crossings. Each of them can be resolved in two ways. So there are eight resolutions in total. And now here is a way to compute Jones polynomial. First of all, each ingredient you see on the screen has a certain contribution. Uh, to each circle you see you assign this sum positive marker of this, negative marker of that. And now what you do for each picture you multiply, for e and then for the whole set of uh, resolutions you add. And now this is already very nice, because this looks like a graded dimension of something two-dimensional. Something one-dimensional in grading one, and something one-dimensional in grading negative one. This is also not bad. We have only one place with negative sign. And it will correspond actually to the cone construction. So what do we do in the trifoil case? Uh, we have one diagram where we have three positive resolutions. Uh, and what, yeah, two circles. But important is this. This q to the 0 comes from the fact that there are no negative smoothness. Uh, well. What zero red goes like this. So it means that if you smooth with red, uh, if you are trying to get on a highway, it means that here you turn right and above. Yeah? And blue means if you, then it means that you, when you turn right, you go down. No, no, it doesn't. It does not. It is like. Uh, driving on the left, the right hand side of the road, the left hand side of the road. If you change orientation, the road stays, still stays the same. You really need to go to a different country to have a different country. OK. But later on, I will uh, show a more local pictures, and it will be easier to see perhaps. So we have one picture with three reds, one blue. Uh, three pictures with one, uh, two reds and one blue. This is contribution. Uh, three again with one red, two blues, and finally one blue. You add them all together, math exercise in no algebra, you get that thing. Uh, then you multiply by a magic monomial that I am not going to go into details. Uh, this is where orientation is hidden. Uh, is he counts the number of positive and negative crossings, but this is not exactly right. So this is because our normalization is, and constants in our scheme relation are slightly different. And this is the Jones polynomial, so please remember it. Uh, later on, I will show 
an example, and then we will report this example. So, uh, this is Kaufman way of computing Jones polynomial, and it is very convenient for categorification, and I will wait to show you how it works. Okay, so what Havana did, so let's forget about that example for a while. Uh, so, if we have a link represented by a diagram, and R is some commutative ring with unit, it's convenient, with unit, and uh, for us it will be integers, Z2 rationals work as well. You'll have one more complicated one, you'll see. So. And then what I want to read, uh, so to uh, diagram, he assigned a bunch of complexes, better to say graded chain complex of three R modules. And to a link, uh, one uh, has homology of that complex. And uh, complexes depend on how you choose a diagram, but after you pass to the homology, this dependence disappears. Defining property is that in order to compute Jones polynomial, you just evaluate the thing where these are better numbers, or, well, ranks of the corresponding homology groups. So in other words, you can say coefficients of the Jones polynomial, so this is the variable, this is a constant. Coefficients are earlier characteristic of the corresponding complexes, or you can say that the whole Jones polynomial is just graded early characteristic. Please note this is Q. And once again, recall that there will be also a reduced version. The only thing you need to do to pass to it, at least on the level of mnemonics, is to add this magenta field on top. <sighs> Convenient way to look into this is to combine all ranks of Havana homology into a single polynomial. I will denote it like this. And then another, another way to rewrite Havana Identity from the previous slide is just say the Jones polynomial is this Havana polynomial evaluated at negative one. Example. Example. So here, just make sure that my laptop doesn't try to go to sleep too soon. So here is right of well. So if you compute its Havana homology, I didn't tell you what it is, I didn't tell you how to define it, but this is the result. So what it is, uh, here is I, this is homological grading, here is quantum grading. I put just non-trivial groups that you are going to see. So uh, this is torsion Z2, there are four Zs, so there are only four places where uh, rank, the better number, is non-trivial. So we have four monomials here. So Q corresponds to this, this is Q cube, T squared, so T is horizontal variable, and so on. If you relate it at negative one, you get this polynomial, and hopefully you still remember it from a few slides back. This is, of course, the Jones polynomial. If you look at the reduced Havana homology, this is a picture you have. And again, you can evaluate its Havana polynomial, evaluate it at negative one, and you get renormalized version of the Jones polynomial. You can see that this guy uh, times Q plus Q inverse is that guy. So one thing I uh, forgot to mention, normalization of the reduced Jones polynomials being one on an unknot uh, basically means that in that uh, state some formula through Kaufman uh, bracket, uh, remember for each circle, for each circle you assign Q plus Q inverse, basically you need to dedicate a circle that is not going to be assigned anything. So you have one copy of Q plus Q inverse. Le uh, less. Okay. Before I show you uh, how to define, quickly show you how to define our homology, I need to tell you that we are going to consider several versions. And all the interesting operations that will appear in the talk today will be coming exactly from interrelations between these different versions. So uh, one is the original Havana homology uh, that he, well, depending on how you count, he defined in 1999. This is when he first uh, wrote about this, or 2000 when the paper was published. Uh, now, because we are going to have odd version, it is called even Havana homology, as uh, originally it was just Havana homology. And notation will be like this. Uh, chain complex CE, differential. Differential will have by degree one zero. It will increase homological grading by one and doesn't change quantum grading. Homology and ring for us is going to be Z. 
Odd homology, uh, this was a modification uh, done by Oshford Rasmussen and Jarbor in 2007. I will say a few words to what the motivation was. Then, if you take reduction mod 2, both these versions coincide. So modulo 2, we have only one version of the Hawano homology. And then we need a unified theory. We need a unified theory over a more interesting ring, a ring of polynomials over xi, where xi squared is 1. And on the level of complexes, it's easy to get from one to another. Uh, on the level of homology, it's not. And this is this was the starting point of this whole project. And I'll say a few words about that. So when we fix it by grading i and j, uh, this no matter which version you can see, there's a corresponding chain groups are just three modules of the same rank, so there is no difference. So everything depends on the differential. And again, on the level of homology, on the complex, on the level of the complex, from unified to get to E when you specialize psi to equal one, uh, to get to order you specialize it to equal one. All right. But my point is, do these axioms that you have to understand no. Uh, let's put it that way. If you want to do it the simplest way possible, perhaps yes. But nothing precludes you from being more creative. Let's put it that way. Uh, but really, if you want Nothing. So, in particular, for example, original theory of Utira used three variables, x, y, z, and x squared was equal y squared was one, like this, and z was independent variable. Turn out that uh, no matter what x, y, and z were, uh, these theory, theories were equivalent to that one. So, it just so happened, but you could have been more creative. Perhaps there is one more variable to get it more interesting. Okay, so time to. Mm -hmm. Doesn't the physics predict two Ps? Oh, honestly, I have no idea what physics predicts. Perhaps you can. I mean, I would be very interested to hear this from you. All right. How about a complex? So, uh, for, for the time being, it will be a community ring. Think of integer fractionals, modular 2. Algebra A is a ring of truncated polynomials, x squared is 0. As an R module, we can just write like this. Uh, you already see that if we put uh, degree of x negative 1 and degree of 1 as 1, uh, quantum grading of A is exactly q plus q inverse. This is not a case. So we start with a diagram. Now I go even one crossing less. Uh, just two crossings, this is as much as I can handle in real time. So, we resolve these diagrams in all possible ways. So, answering your question, this is how you decide uh, what is positive resolution, what is negative resolution. There is really a difference. So, if you stay like this, one goes from above left to above right, and here it is from below to below. Nope. Components are not oriented. Component, uh, for this version of the homology, before or for computing Jones polynomial, before you come to the final uh, adjustments of, by uh, monomial, orientation plays no role. That's the, that's the whole point. That's why it is convenient. That's why it is convenient. That's why we are able to not to care about how we smooth, because uh, if orientation was here, then, uh, for example, if everything was oriented upwards, we wouldn't know how to orient after we smooth like this. So orientation doesn't, on the level I'm going to explain it, orientation does not matter at all. It only shifts things a little bit, but this is easy to take care of. By the way, Jones polynomial does depend on the orientation, 
But for links, if you choose different, if you choose orientations of components differently, it just shifts. It just gets multiplied by a power of q. So this is that last term that I didn't explain. Okay. Um, now. Uh, uh, perhaps I should uh, stop here. So to each circle, I assign a copy of A. Quantum grading uh, is Q plus Q inverse. Then remember, when I have several circles, for Jones polynomial, I need to multiply. It means that here I need to take tensor product. This was the idea of the verification. Uh, then I need to add an addition to response to direct sum. Uh, now, this basically gives me chain groups. I also need differentials, so how to do that. At each change of resolution, for example, I change this crossing from positively resolved to negatively resolved. Uh, either two circles can be fused into one, or one can be split into two. And in first case, we just multiply elements on two circles that get fused are multiplied. Here we need a co-multiplication that is defined like that. And uh, it's not easy, and uh, not very complicated to define co-unit as well. And altogether, it gives you a Frobenius system with very nice algebraic structures. But this is not the point of the talk today. Uh, so here we have merge, merge, split, split, so multiplication, co-multiplication. Unfortunately, if uh, things are like that, these square commutes, and this is not what you need for a differential square to be zero, so you need to adjust this with signs. This is not a big deal. Change the sign here, and this is your final complex. All right, of course, details are sweeped under the rug, but it gives a rough idea. If we want to work with reduced version, not much has to be done. We need to pick uh, a point here, mark it somewhere, uh, then uh, it propagates along all the resolutions, and what we say is that to each circle, result circle that is marked, instead of assigning A, we assign only half of the A. So now quantum, well, graded uh, dimension is not Q plus Q inverse, but just Q, or you can say one of the gradation. And that's it. Uh, so, if you result get three circles or more, mm -hmm. do you assign it? How do I assign what? I need to pick. It is part of the. It is part of the picture, part of the construction where you pick this uh, base point. And if you have several components, the result might depend on your choice, depending on which. So the fact is, along one component, it doesn't matter where you pick the base point. But if it is chosen on different components, the result might change. Yes, and I'll say if you want this. Uh, but the fact that it doesn't, uh, that for example, for a knot, it doesn't depend on the placement of this base point, I mean, it has to be proof, it is not immediate. Okay, a few more uh, comments about this construction. So, first of all, I didn't talk about grading much. It's not complicated, just would make things too cumbersome. In general, if you have n crossings, there are two to the n resolutions, of course. They are arranged in n dimensional cube of resolutions. Here, there are two crossings. Uh, so, uh, we have four resolutions, a uh, square. Each edge is assigned multiplication or co-multiplication. Each two-dimensional square commutes. It's, not, it's very straightforward to assign, take care of the signs so that things become anti-commutative. And together, it gives me differential square zero, as it should be. Oh, yeah. And uh, the resulting homology does not depend on how we choose the signs. What homology? As this I also need. Uh, very briefly, we need extra structure. We need to put an uh, arrow in the direction of the negative marker. And then, as after resolution, when you uh, go from positive smoothing to negative smoothing, you need to rotate it by 90 degrees. Now, what you assign uh, to each circle is like, uh, to each resolution is a different beast. Namely, to each circle you assign a variable. So here, to circles variable x1, x2. Just one circle, so just one variable. And to the whole resolution you assign the following guy. Uh, you take a free, ability, free R module generated by the thing and then take exterior algebra. So basically, uh, if you look before, if a resolution had, for example, five circles, 
Each circle was assigned something two dimensional. You take 10 the product, uh, the result will be 2 to the fifth, what it is, 32 dimensional, right? Here, uh, we have five variables, and generators will be all possible sets, subsets of such uh, generators without repetition, or that doesn't matter. So again, there are two to the n. So dimensions at least match. But differentials are now different. So for example, if we merge two circles together, uh, what we do, we just identify the corresponding variables. So this is here. We just quotient by equation x1 equals x2. Co-multiplication is the only place where arrows are used. So if arrow goes from x1 to x2, this is what we put. So whatever we had here, we take wedge product, exterior product, with this difference. So uh, you can see what happened. Here we had one circle, here we had two circles. So this guy might go, this variable x1 might become this or that. It doesn't matter. If you carefully, if you put here x1, you will get x2 minus x2 wedge x1. So x1 which x2, and if you put here x2, it is automatically x1 which x2. So it doesn't matter here. What you should notice, if you look carefully, that this square is already on the commutative. And this is a bad news for us, uh, because it's not straightforward to assign signs anymore. Uh, one last thing, I'm not writing here what to do with reduced version. It's very easy. If there is a base point on some of the circles, you just don't assign any variable to it. You just have one less variable, and again, dimension is halved. Dimension is halved. OK, uh, so if you comments, um, squares can be both commutative and anti-commutative. It is possible to assign signs. Unfortunately, it is not explicit, so you have to work harder if you want to compute. Uh, the result of the homology does not depend on all the choices you make. Good news, but again, needs to be proved. And motivation was this, that uh, Havana homology modular 2 have nice property that there is a spectral sequence converging from, st starting from the Havana homology, Havana chain complex modular 2, and converging to the Hegar-Fuller homology of the double branch carver over this guy. And what homology was created as a way to make this thing work over integers, but unfortunately it wasn't proved yet, but conjecture still stands and people believe. Now, it's time to compare even and odd versions. So, uh, as I already mentioned, as by graded abelian groups, if you forget about differentials, even in our homology, it's exactly the same thing. Dimensions match, and this is the only thing. There is, in fact, canonical bijections be between generators. Really, it's not isomorphism, it's equality. As chain complexes, when differentials are taken into account, they are congruent modular two, and this is what we are going to denote as Havana chain complex over the two. Correspondingly, we have Havana Homology modular 2. Oh, by the way, please notice this magenta tilde on top. It means that reduced and reduced doesn't matter here. In particular, it means that graded order characteristics just give back Jones polynomial. No difference here. Uh, this is interesting thing. It will be related to uh, the main object, the main homological operations I'm talking about today. So if you take mirror image of the node, it's very easy to see that even Havana complex is just dual. Because of that, homology is dual, and knowing one, for example, knowing homology for the uh, not oil link, you can immediately get the one for the mirror image using universal coefficient theory. For what Havana homology complexes are not dual anymore, but homology are. And this is really already not an elementary exercise. It is a theorem that took a while to prove. Think. Now, a relation between reduced and non-reduced version. Modular 2, modular 2 
Non-reduced uh, non homology is just two copies of the reduced one, so there is no difference whatsoever. Uh, odd homology is also two copies of the reduced version, so there is no point in considering non-reduced odd homology. If you know reduced ones, you know everything. But in even case, this is no longer true. <sighs> reduced and non-reduced homology are independent, not invariants. There are examples where one is the same, another is different, and vice versa. And returning to your question, for links, what homology reduced, uh, actually reduced, sorry, reduced homology depends on where you choose a base point, but for uh, modular 2 or for odd homology, there is no difference. Any questions? Okay, we are coming to the interesting part. So, uh, we need homological operations, and there is one uh, that is very natural and doesn't require any extra construction, namely Bachstein homomorphism. So, we consider a short exact sequence of coefficient rings, z2 to z4 multiplication by 2, and then taking reduction mod 2 to z2 again. Uh, this, of course, gives me a short exact sequence of complexes. Even or odd here doesn't matter. Everything works. And uh, this, of course, gives me connecting homomorphisms. Uh, this thing in brackets 1, this is a convenient short way to show grading, sh uh, well, shift in homological degree and homological grading. So these guys are even or odd Bachstein homomorphisms. Now, the bad news, unfortunately, is that they exist, but they don't give any new information. If you know homology, you know exactly what Bachstein is doing. Namely, the image is just, uh, well, his dimension of the image is just rank of the two torsion. That's it. Good news is that we can generalize this construction. We can consider different short exact sequences of coefficient rings and try to get something new. This is exactly the point. And also we will need a formula. Formula is easier to get from another short exact sequence. So here z gets multiplied by 2 to go to z, then reduction mod 2. Uh, this gives us connecting homomorphism from z2 homology to integer homology. Two versions, even and odd, depending on which complex you consider. And then uh, Bockstein is a reduction of that guy mod 2. So if you look at the formula, uh, how it works. So say even Bockstein, even Bockstein, we take uh, homological class mod 2 here, we consider it as an integer class there, we apply even differential. So we get exactly the same place here, but with graded, grading shifted. Then we need to go back, so we divide by 2. It should always be possible. And then uh, if we were talking about B, this would be it. This would be the answer. Uh, but we need to take a reduction mode 2 in order to get B. That's the answer. And of course, the same works for all. Exactly the same. Please remember these formulas. We will need them in a couple of slides. Time to go to unified homology. So, again, L is a link, D is a diagram. Now, this is our ring. Xi is a variable, independent variable. Its square is 1. Uh, so, uh, as a Z module, these are just two copies of Z. So, we need a unified complex, and uh, this is what we do. So, as just three are models, it's very simple. We take, for example, even complex and replace each copy of Z that we have there with the copy of R. Here we consider R as a Z module. This is standard product of D. Or we can do the same with an odd complex. Remember, there is a canonical bijection between Z's here and Z's there. And tilde here, I mean, it doesn't matter. Works just as well for reduced and non-reduced version. No matter here. So, as by graded free R models, everything is very simple. We need differential. Here is a differential. This is even differential. This is odd differential. Here we have psi. The first question you should ask, hopefully, is how can we divide by one half? 
uh, because I mean everything is supposed to work over integers. And then we'll see it's very simple. And remember, even in order of one of differentials, we are congruent modular two. So when you add them or you subtract them, you always have something even. You can divide by two. It's not a big deal. Okay, uh, with this definition, you can see that even a com complex is just unified specialized at xi equals 1. So if you put here xi equals 1, so if you put there xi equals 1, you get back your integers. And here you have just two copies of 1 half d even. And the same for y. Theorem is that this actually gives a link invariant. And Interesting question that we started with, I mean, there were several starting points on this project, uh, was whether this invariant, unified invariant, that combines both even and odd homology is a stronger not invariant or not. Unfortunately, computing it directly requires working with our modules over this ring. It is not a principal ideal domain. It's not. I mean, classification exists, but it's not so, even for finitely generated classification exists, it's not easy to work with. Uh, and also, well, we wanted to do some computation. So, I mean, you have our model here, you need to have our model there, you need to be able to compare them. There should be a canonical presentation. Once again, it does exist, uh, but it's not easy to work with. So, our question was. Is it worth the trouble to try to implement algorithm to work over that ring if perhaps you get something, if perhaps you don't get anything new at all? So what we did instead, we just investigated algebraic structures, algebraic connections between these two versions of the homology. So basically look at what we could grasp quickly and see what's going on. So what's the answer to this question? Well, you will know by the end of this talk. Good. So, where operations come from? So, integers as an R module has two structures. Basically, xi is an involution, xi squared is 1, and there are exactly two involutions on z. Identity and negative identity. So, in one case, you get Honestly, I want to call these even integers and those odd integers, but these terms have a strange other meaning, right, that you learn in school. So, formal name would be integers with even R module structures and integers with odd R module structure. But this is too much to say, so I will just say even and odd integers and hope you understand what I mean here. Okay, uh, when you do this, uh, you can again uh, get back from unified homology to even or odd one, at least from the complex and homology, by taking a tensor. Ah, shoot, sorry. You take your complex and uh, take a tensor product over R with the corresponding model. Okay, we look, as I said, to uh, short uh, exact sequences of coefficients. So all our operations will be Bockstein like. There are different ones as well. I will say a few words about them. Uh, so here is a short exact sequence. Of course, it leads to short exact sequence of complexes. Multiplying by this guy, taking quotient by that guy. Uh, so here you just take tensor product uh, over R with whatever is there. And so we have a connecting differential. Going from where? Going from here to there with a gradient shift by 1. How it works? Let's see. We take an element here, homological class, uh, or homological class. We consider it as an element over ring R. We apply unified differential. We get here with the grading shift. Then we have to divide back by 1 plus psi and take even homology class. Now, if you look carefully, uh, for DU we had a formula involving 
d odd and d well d even and d odd and since x is a homo well odd homology class d odd vanishes from it so only d even is left and it will be exactly d even well one half d even times this thing when you divide you get just this formula and I hope you recognize that it was very similar to Bakshtein, right? I will say a few words about this. The same can be done for odd version. So here we have phi going from odd to even. Here we have phi going from even to odd. <sighs> nice thing is that if we apply those two guys to a uh, twice homology class, you just get, for example, in even case, uh, even apply, well, even homology class of image of the D1, so it's zero. So it means that image of that guy lies exactly in the two torsion. And good point about this is that the invariant is just the dimension, uh, I will say it on the next slide. Uh, invariant is just the dimension of this guy. It is basically vector field over Z2. And uh, we proved with Chris that these things are linked very uh, Let's look over Z2. So in this case, we again look for something. Uh, so we have Z2 homology, Z2 homology. We, can, we want to see what can be there. As a group, there are two possibilities, Z4 or Z2 plus Z2. Each of those two guys has two, uh, two armorial structures. So in total, there are four possibilities. Uh, so if it is just like this, as an R module, then it is trivial homomorphism, has nothing to do. Uh, we can take even integers, well, integers with even structure, blah, blah, quotient by 4, so Z4 with even structure, where psi acts as an identity, and then connecting homomorphism is just Bakshtein. Or you can take odd structure and get odd Bakshtein, or you can take... Uh, Another version of Z2 plus Z2, so here Xi was acting trivially, here Xi acts by exchanging two components, and then you just get the sum. And once again, I remind you that this is something that we saw before, and the obvious corollaries is that those fees, or even and even odd, acting from, going from odd homology to even, or even to odd, in fact are integer lifts of even and odd Bakshtein. In general, Bakshtein homomorphisms don't admit integer lists, they don't exist. Turn out that in this situation they do, but this integer lift go from one type of homology to another. So this is not the same integer homology. This is the situation. Degree 2. Of course we can take all possible compositions uh, that make sense. Uh, this is a corresponding formula that are easy to see. Uh, both these two guys, now these are differentials going from homology to as one integer homology theory to the same one shifted by two. Uh, both of them are integral lifts of square of the sum of two Bachsteins. Because Bachstein homomorphisms are actually differentials, the squares are zero. Uh, what you have here, this uh, better squared, is uh, commutator of two Bachsteins. So, all of them give rise to link invariance, namely all of them have image in a two torsion, so we can just consider the two dimensions, the two dimensions of the images, and this is a numeric invariance. Numeric invariance are easy to look at and easy to compare. This is a good thing. Yeah, this I already mentioned, uh, that even the not Bachsteins themselves don't carry any new information to know that their sum is actually a new invariant. A few things about that later. And, uh, yeah, uh, remember that there is another iteration of that kind uh, over on more two Havana homologies that has grading two, namely second standard square. And it is defined after considering <coughs> homotopy spectra for Havana homology. Uh, this was done by Dixon and Sarkar a few years ago. And that was looking at that guy, trying to find a more easy way to compute it, was yet another starting pro point of that project. And I will say a word about this in a second. Uh, by the way, first unit squared is just uh, Bakshtein. 
So we computed all these guys that I talked about for all prime non-alternating knots with at most 16 crossings. For alternating knots, there is nothing to do. There is no, basically no proportion to vote. What we got is that among that many knots with at most 14 crossings, there were nine pairs that had the same even and odd homology, but different ranks of those iterations. So it means that unified homology theory does carry more information, simply because just looking at operations coming from that structure already provides us something new. Whether there is more or not is not clear, but this already requires uh, being able to work with unified homology directly, or being able to compute uh, our and compare our modules over that week. Now, here comes the interesting part. For all these nine pairs, the homological, the homological operations were distinguishing, they were not distinguishing the mirror images. So, for example, for these two knots, how to read it? These are knots, uh, notation from the knot scape. So, non alternating knot with 13 crossing, and this is number in the table. A bar on top means mirror image. So, for example, theta O, this was one of those, there were several. For these two knots, is the same, but if you consider them without mirror image, they are in fact different. So, in other words, it means that knowing invariant for a knot does not tell you uniquely what is invariant for the mirror image. So for example, you know theta odd for this guy and for this guy they're the same, but for mirror images they're different. And as I mentioned from the beginning, for all reasonable not invariants that I am aware of, combinatorial thing, uh, this is not true. So for example, all TQFT invariants, all invariants coming from TQFT, if you know it for a knot, you can uniquely define it determine it for its mirror images. Here it is not the case. Uh, why do I say reasonable? There are some unreasonable ones. So, for example, uh, we all know what is an annoting number, right? You take a diagram and then you ask how, what is the minimal number of crossing changes you need to perform in order to get to a trivial knot. Well, if you know it for a knot, you know it for a mirror image, but now imagine that instead of asking how many crossing changes you make, you ask how many crossing changes from positive crossing to negative crossing you make. And if it is impossible, then you say, okay, my invariant is, let's say, infinity or negative infinity. Well, pick your arbitrary favorite symbol, whatever. Uh, then it will have this property, but I won't call that invariant reasonable. But, I mean, there are a few sides that you can imagine, but uh, some of them are combinatorial, some of them are algebraic. So I cannot phrase in words uh, what kind of not invariance I'm talking about, but, yeah, among those, let's put it that way, among those that I like, I have never seen anything like that. Uh, well, if you go to 15 crossings, you have more of the same kind. Uh, with uh, reduced homology, things get more interesting. So you have to go up to 16 crossings. There are that many knots, and there are only four pairs, four pairs that are distinguished by new homological operations. And again, it means that unified, reduced unified homology carry more information. And again, they distinguish uh, mirror images when knots were not distinguished. So the same pattern continues, but they appear to be independent invariants. Finally, how this all started? We started looking at this beta squared, this invariant of degree two, homological, uh, homological operation of degree two on what to homology, and uh, second standard square. Uh, so this is once again commutative of even and Bachstein. So the first knot with different ranks had 14 crossings. And a very nice conjecture, in fact, that thing is a commutator was ruined. Well, after that, we realized that it can never be true, but that's a different story. So finally, I just want to show you how is it possible that for mirror images something happens and for knot does not. Here are mirrors of those two knots I mentioned. And if you see everywhere, the thickness is exactly, this is old homology, is exactly 
two. So there is no place to have any non-trivial homological operation of degree two. Simply no place. But if you look at the original homology, here is the difference. Now it is thicker, and potentially, in very going from here to there, can be either trivial or non-trivial. And this is what happens. It might, so in all, it happened here, it didn't happen there. So it, it was, but this is just an uh, illustration of how this can happen, and I'll stop here. Thank you.